What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week four locker room pre game team analysis that I'm going to show you for my matchup this week in season four of the GBA against the Milwaukee Saws Bucks. This is a division rivalry against Magnitude, and someone's leaving this match today with their first win. It's either going to be me or him. I'm hoping it's going to be me. Let's go over a few things first. First of all, he has an incredibly scary team. And I'm going to tell you those 11 Pokemon right now that he can choose his team from. He has Mega Gardevoir, Suicune, Landorus T, Electros, Latios, Arcanine, Donphan, Crawdont, Miltank, Breloom, and Muck. Now, I did a little reconnaissance and checked to see which Pokemon he's using the most. As of, as of now, he's used Mega Gardevoir, Suicune, and Landorus in every one of his matches. He's used Electros, Latios, and Arcanine twice, and he's used Donphan, Crawdont, and Miltank once each. He's never used Breloom, and he's never used Muck. Now, I kind of looked into that, and he's going to want to be switching some things up. We've had a preseason battle before just for funsies, and I think he's looking at my team and assessing threats and stuff like that. And I think one of the things he's very scared of is uh, me sweeping with Mega Swampert. If he's done any research by watching any of my old battles, he knows that shutting down Swampert with uh, good defensive Pokemon that he can't break through is a solid way to win this match. And I think he also sees that my team is a little weak in the hazard removal setting, and so I think he's going to try and play with that a little bit too. So I factored all those things in. The Pokemon is using the most ones that match up well against my team, and things that he thinks I'm going to bring that he's going to want to counter. And I predict... I can't fully nail down his six Pokemon, because Mag has a very good team, and almost any of these Pokemon can work pretty well against my team, except a few. So I started knocking off Pokemon that I don't think he's going to bring. And so what I'm left with is, almost assuredly, these four Pokemon are coming. Mega Gardevoir, Suicune, Latios, Electros. They pack great coverage, they are very solid options to pack super effective hits against pretty much my entire 11 if they need to. And then there's two other Pokemon, and this is where it gets a little foggy. Does he think I'm bringing the rain? My prediction is that he does think I'm bringing the rain, and if that's the case, I think he's going to bring Crawdont, because Crawdont with rain-boosted Aqua Jets and stuff like that is going to be a monster. It's going to be a, a real issue for me, so I think he's bringing Crawdont. That said, he might bring Breloom, and I don't think he's going to bring both of those Pokemon, because if he does, then he has not brought a solid stealth rocker option. So I think he's going to bring one of those, either Breloom or Crawdont, and then his last Pokemon is either going to be Landers T or Donphan. Now part of the reason at first I thought it was going to be Donphan is that Landers T presents a big issue in that it has a massive ice weakness, and a majority of my sweepers and even some of my other Pokemon pack ice beam coverage. It would be too easy for me to get a Pokemon that could hit him four times super effective, and I don't think he wants to bring it. I think he wants to bring Domfan. I think he wants Rapid Spin and Stealth Rocks on it. Probably. So, if I had gun to my head, if I had to predict his six Pokemon, I would say Mega Gardevoir, Suicune, Latios, Electros, Crawdont, and Donphan. Um, and I've made plans to deal with other ones as they, as they may come. So, then I got into my team building, and so I'm going to show you guys the six that I ended up selecting for my battle this week four. I'm bringing Moltres, Ditto, Mesprit, Gudra, Scizor, and Gyarados. So first things first, I'm not bringing the rain. It it benefits Suicune too much, who is a problem. If he runs physically defensive Crocune set for Suicune, it's a problem for my team, um, especially in the rain where it's only going to get stronger Scalds. It doesn't benefit my sweepers enough because the Pokemon that like it the most, or the Pokemon that likes it the most being Mega Swampert, is walled by Suicune pretty hard. There are some contingencies that I found where maybe I could take on a Suicune if I was in first, I hit it with a power up punch, it comes in, I hit it with another power up punch, and I go for two earthquakes in a row and he doesn't get a burn on the skull. That was one way that I could get this get this to work. But the thing to remember there is that requires two turns of setup, followed by a two-hit KO, 
and I need to have the rain set up. It's two Pokemon just to try and counter Swampert's primary counter, and then I still have other weaknesses in Latios being a big issue for Swampert. Latios being definitely the biggest one, but Breloom being a big issue. Some of the walls become a big issue. Landers presents a, a, a problem if he switches in and gets the Intimidate off on me. I didn't want to play with that. I'm tired of trying to make Swampert work against teams that have solid counters to him. So I'm not going to. Not this week. This week, the name of the game is, he's bringing so many things with grass. That's my prediction. So many things with grass. And so I'm going to try and take advantage of that best I can by making him move, waste move pools. So... Let's go over these Pokemon bit by bit. Uh, I started out this process by first looking at the team and saying, okay, what are the big problems? Electros has incredible coverage on everything, so what am I going to do about Electros? And the number one answer immediately came to mind is Gudra. Gudra can eat up grass type attacks if I had opted to bring Mega Swampert, which I haven't. Um, he doesn't care about uh, his stab. He doesn't care about likely coverage moves in Flamethrower. He eats up Flamethrowers that would be aimed for Scizor. He eats up Lightning Attacks that might be aimed for Moltres. He's just a solid answer to everything that uh, this guy could be packing for me. Another thing worth noting, he can switch in and survive to Focus Sash Aqua Jets from a Crawdaunt. So I could switch in, if he wants to go for another Aqua Jet, he's not going to kill me and I can bring him down to his Sash with a with a Thunderbolt. He it just in general presents a lot of options for me. His coverage is as follows, let me show you guys this one. He is uh, packing Dragon Pulse, uh, I might change that before the match, don't, don't hold me to that one. Flamethrower, that's wrong. I have not adequately done these guys. Let me tell you what he's going to be carrying instead of what he currently has. Good thing I'm doing this, guys. Um, he's going to have Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and Sludge Bomb, and I'm still deciding whether or not I want a Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse, or Dragon Tail with him. And here are the considerations. Draco Meteor is a great option for one-hit KOing Latios. However, Latios will outspeed me and one-hit KO me with his Draco Meteor in return. If he packs Dragon Pulse, he won't one-shot me. So that's, those are considerations there. Draco Meteor is, uh, it's risky in the sense that if I do get a kill with it, Mega Gardevoir coming in becomes a big issue for Gudra. And a lot of the time, my coverage is good to kill other things without having Dragon Stab. So the reason I would run Dragon Tail is just to phase Suicune if he's trying to start Crocune setting up. I've looked into this. Suicune is going to be difficult for me to take out with just a couple of hits. It would be very easy for him to start setting up Calm Mines. My physical sweepers aren't very good at breaking through him as a physical wall, and my special sweepers won't be able to beat him once he gets a few Calm Mines up. So, I can phase him with Dragon Tail. That's one of my considerations. Obviously, I need to change all of this. This is no good, so uh, let's not look too deeply into that one. Uh, but that'll be fixed before the match starts up. Have him with Assault Vest. He's running a Modest Nature with um, 252 HP and 252 Special Attack. So just to be a bulky tank to try and get some mid-game damage uh, onto a lot of the threats that are going to be a problem for me. Next, we're going to look into my... Everyone's going to... I know you're all going to be asking, what am I going to do about Suicune? Suicune is going to be an issue, guys. Here, enter my primary Suicune defense core. These three Pokemon. I've already showed you Gudra. Let me show you what's next on the list. Ditto. Ditto is an incredible Pokemon for just wasting out Suicune. Suicune is going to have a big issue dealing with Ditto because if I switch in... And also note this set. He's not a Choice Scarf set. That's a that's the most common thing to do with a Ditto. Run Choice Scarf and have him counter Sweet. Be a, be a revenge killer. I've already got good revenge killers. I don't need another one. Ditto is serving a very important thing. And that's he's serving as a versatile defensive core for me on his own. And the way he's going about doing that is if we assess his major threats. The Sawsbuck's major threats. They cannot beat themselves. Landorus T cannot beat himself. Electros cannot beat himself. Um, Suicune, it's just going to be a stalled out match. And all of this just begs the point that Ditto is my, my versatile, okay, let's slow things down a minute kind of Pokemon. 
So he can switch in on a traditional Suicune set. Suicune's move pool is not that great, it's not that vast, and even if he is packing something super effective against himself, then I have it too. If he starts setting up with Crocoon, I can immediately get in there, get those boosts. It's really a fail-safe for me, and he's... I've done a lot of calcs and I've done a lot of like playing around with this Pokemon, and I love him as a safe switch for a lot of different Pokemon. So, he's also a good revenge kill option, even without the Choice Scarf, especially because if he hasn't seen Ditto yet, I can bluff it. Uh, another really good thing about him is that if I predict he's bringing Dom Fan, and I do, I immediately have a Stealth Rocker and a Rapid Spinner in the in the Ditto department. Uh, running max HP, I'm not going to be that much worse off as a tank, especially against some of the Pokémon who actually have pretty horrendous HP. Like if I switch in on a Mega Gardevoir, I actually have more HP than it has. So everything about this Ditto screams like bring it this week, bring it this week, and I almost didn't anyway. But I really want to do it. This is my time to shine. I got to get creative here. So uh, backs against the ropes here. People can blame hacks all they want. I'm not going to do that. I'm 0-3. I'm going to turn this around. We're going to my next Suicune counter, and also potentially my cleaner for this game, Mesprit. Now, Mesprit, I'm really, really excited about this set. He's packing Psy Shock, Energy Ball, Ice Beam, and Psych Up. Now, if I get into a situation where I'm trying to stall out Suicune and he's just refusing to switch out, with uh, against my ditto my goal there is get him into a position where i predict he's gonna rest the next turn switch in two chains who will outspeed him get that psych up off and now i can tank the living hell out of his scalds once again even though he will be a whatever he's at at that time plus four plus five plus six who knows and now i've got two chains in massively specially defensive boosted and massively special attack boosted he can beat a Suicune one-on-one -on -one easily because once he gets plus three or higher, Psy Shock is going to overtake the amount of damage Energy Ball was doing, and Energy Ball is already a three-hit KO against him. So um, he also packs Ice Beam to give him answers for Latios, who otherwise resists Psy Shock and Energy Ball. It also is the hardest hitting thing I have for Landorus T. And, uh, you know, I'm really pumped about this set because it's a fail-safe that if if he misreads the situation and thinks he can get a bunch of boosts up with Suicune, I can sweep his entire team with this one. So I'm really excited about this set to try this one out. Could have packed Calm Mind on it on my own, but I'd rather not do that. He doesn't need the boosts to put in some mid-game work, which is really the big deal for him there. So we've gone over my, my sweet anti-Suicune core. These are also just, in general, good answers to a lot of kind of major threats who I just needed coverage for. Guja's gonna force a lot of switches, especially against people like Electros. I'm gonna have to predict who he's gonna Volt Switch into a lot of the time, but uh, Gudra does give me a lot of options with with regards to the rest of his team, so um, I'm happy with these three. Let's go over my kind of offensive mod now. Uh, Fox makes his triumphant return. Fox right now the MVP of my team. Most kills uh, best differential. Let's see what he can continue to do for us this week because the reason I'm bringing him is scenarios that I've panned out. As far as like 1v1ing his entire team, that's not really what Fox does. Now, rocks are going to be an issue, but like I said, I have ways of getting rid of them this week. Uh, Ditto is one of those ways. Scizor, who we'll get to, is another one. I can get rid of rocks. Fox also serves a very interesting purpose in his matchups against other Pokemon that I think Mag will think he can beat me with. Uh, a couple of notable ones are things like Dawn Fan. Now, if I see Dawn Fan and I predict a Dawn Fan lead, Moltres is actually a good counter to that because I can get a burn off first turn, and if I get the burn off, then if he's packing Rock Slide, it will fail to KO me. It actually won't do all that much at all. Following that, if the Willow lands and he goes for Rock Slide and, and all that pans out how I hope it does without hacks, then I can recover, resisting that Rock Slide again, get back up to a decent health pool, and then he's in a position where an Air Slash will kill him. Uh, failing that, I can just go for a Fire Blast, which will kill him pretty early anyway. All this is a, a potential lead option that I'm looking into. Fox becomes an anti-lead for Dawn Fan. 
He doesn't do quite as well in that option against Landorus T. However, I'm, I need to make a couple of predictions about what he's doing with his Landorus, or I need to scout it with my Ditto. If he's running fully offensive, that's good for me. I want him to be an offensive Landorus T. If he's defensive, then we have to work around some things. If he is defensive, though, Moltres can survive a burned 252 neutral natured stone edge also and then can do the same thing that i proceeded to do with against the dawn fan i can ro roost up removing my fat my flying weakness making me only two times weak to it a two times super effective burned stone edge will not kill moltres and i can either stall him out predict that he's going to go for the earthquake and we'll try and finish him off with a fire blast which will do 70 to 80 percent kind of depending on how much defensive investment he has uh, I'm timid, so if he's not speed invested as, on the Landorus, I will outspeed him. Um, because Landorus is a 91 base speed Pokemon, I'm timid max speed investment. So he's really got to pump speed if he wants to beat me in this in that regard. Moltres is going to match up pretty well against the rest of his team. I really want to spread some of those burns on a lot of his threats. I want chip damage on Electros, who has, like I said before, great coverage for my team. However, he gets chipped away at very easily and he doesn't have big killing power so if i can get some status on him get some damage on that electros i'm in a pretty good shape so that's fox for you guys we're gonna go to my last two pokemon scissor scissor uh, makes his return once again i'm running a full speed full attack option variant here because this ensures that a 252 Jolly Crawdon speed ties me at the best. I could have gone Jolly and got that outspeed, but I really needed to be adamant max speed, uh, attack so that I could guarantee the one hit KO on Mega Gardevoir even with defense investment. So, I mean, it is what it is. He might run a incredibly defensive Mega Gardevoir set with HP fire, and then that kind of throws things in my in my a wrench in my game. Another thing to note is that Mega Gardevoir learns Fire Punch, but he doesn't learn Flamethrower. So HP fire not being that strong. It, there's a lot of ifs and going on in this situation, but basically Mega Gardevoir is Mag's MVP. He has the most kills on his team, and Rightfully so, if he gets his Mega off, he's a fast threat, he hits very hard against pretty much everyone on my team. Not able to one-hit KO most of them, but definitely forcing a lot of pressure on me. So, Scizor, not the type of Pokemon I want to switch in against Mega Gardevoir, but if I can find the right circumstance of who I want to switch in, maybe Ditto, and set up a situation where I can get Proto in a little more safely, um, then Proto can be my cleanup for Mega Gardevoir. I can scout with him with U-Turn. Superpower is basically just a coverage move in case he brings Pokemon like Crawdont or Miltank, who will both hit super effective by it. And I pack the default just because there's there could be a situation where it's very important that I have it. So, And I didn't really need a fourth move. I could have run Pursuit, but I didn't see a whole lot of circumstances where it would be safe to use it because it is important that I try and keep Scizor as healthy as possible if I'm not going to be opting to Bullet Punch. Gyarados is my last Pokemon. Here's why I'm bringing Gyarados. Water and ice coverage is good against this team. It's very good. And I would want to bring Mega Swampert. However, Mega Swampert, his weaknesses, I think, are going to be plentiful. I think there's going to be a lot of grass-type coverage. There's not going to be a lot of electric-type coverage. Only a couple of Pokemon on his team can really learn it naturally. Obviously, anything can be packing hidden power. And you guys have seen my team. I have a lot of four times weaknesses. This is something that people have been talking about a while about my team. And you know what? Next season, I'm going to correct that issue. But i got to work with what i got right now. People aren't going to be packing Hidden Power Electric. He's not going to be predicting Gyarados to be my main sweeper. He's going to be predicting Mega Swampert to be my main sweeper. And I think that that helps me out a lot. I think Intimidate's going to help me out a lot. Uh, my Gyarados set is a unique speed EV setup where he's Jolly 176 speed. This ensures I outspeed Jolly 252 Breloom. Um, this gives me 72 HP investment and 252 attack. I threw 12 in defense. That ensures that I get an odd number for stealth rock damage. I'm running Lumberry so I can set up with Dragon Dance. If he brings in a Suicune, I can taunt it so it can't boost alongside me. It's forced to start going for Scalds, hoping for that burn. 
The problem is, Waterfall and Ice Fang, of course, aren't super effective against Suicune, so... That's the trade-off. It's probably that I'd go for a taunt and then try and make a switch into something like Ditto so I can boost safely without him being able to boost alongside me. I, you know, he wouldn't be able to get a rest off while the taunt's active. The taunt might not be the best move. You know, I might even change it before the match. I don't know, but as it stands, this is the set I'm running. Uh, I think GLaDOS could put in some work today. Also, I just need to be really smart with my switches. So there it is, guys. There you have it. That's week four. I'm putting these guys in the battle box, and I'm going to go see if Mag's ready to battle. As always, my name's Gym Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.